Did we finish this one? At least the initial setup? What did we get for the answer? We solved it, but th there was a problem. Was there? Did we double check our answer? Okay, it didn't work when we checked it. So we have to solve this simultaneously. Um, what did the book do? This is chapter 16. Nobody, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what the book does. The book just adds up two hydroniums. They had the hydronium from the HCN, and they just add it to the hydronium from the um, H2O. Um, the, then they get a total hydronium, which won't satisfy either equilibrium. And so this is a case where we have multiple equilibria that we have to figure out. And so let's solve this simultaneously. In fact, for all multiple equilibria problems, we're supposed to solve these simultaneously. But it's too much work to solve multiple equilibria simultaneously, so we try little tricks to make our life easier. One of the tricks is the way we tried it first, the stepwise. You know, if we could solve it stepwise, oh, that's ten, maybe a thousand times easier than solving it simultaneously. So how do we solve it simultaneously? Well, for simultaneous, we have, yeah, two equilibria happening at the same time. And so we have this equilibria, which is the acid hydrolysis, forms H3O plus, the CN minus. And then we have this equilibria, H2O liquid plus H2O liquid, hydronium, and hydroxide. And so we have two equilibria we have to solve simultaneously, but um, how do we do that? And what does it mean to solve simultaneously? What it means to solve simultaneously is we look at what both equilibria have in common. And both equilibria have in common hydronium. And so if they have hydronium in common, then the equilibrium hydronium here has to equal the equilibrium hydronium here. And so these must be equal. Otherwise, um, it doesn't work, right? The total hydronium at equilibrium is going to equal the hydronium from the HCM plus the hydronium from water. Now it does. So how do we figure out how much hydronium we get from the HCN and how much hydronium we get um, from the water? And so in other words, um, we have two unknowns here. Uh, the HCN, what should we call that, X or Y? <coughs> See if I should use the same as the book. Yes. X. Uh, I want to use the same as the book, so I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it Y, because the book calls it Y. And so the hydronium from the HCN I'm going to call Y. The hydronium from the water I'll call X. And so we'll call this Y plus X, so I use the same. I would have probably did it the opposite. I probably would have done HCN with the X. 
And so we have two unknowns there, y and x. How are we going to solve for those? Well, we need a system of equations. And so we're going to fill in the table as much as we can. So for here, this is the initial concentration, 1 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. This is the total concentration of HCN. And so this is what we do. We just reset this because we don't really know what the equilibrium is. We always reset it. Resetting in this case, we're just imagining that no HCN has dissociated yet. All of it is on the left. That's called re, you know that's called resetting. The book does it all the time, right? Because in reality, it's, it's hydrolyzed. You know, some of it's ionized, some of it's dissociated. We just don't know how much, right? And so this is reset to the left. And now we're going to say, okay, let's imagine it hydrolyzing or ionizing. And so it's going to be minus what? Minus y. This is going to be plus y, this is going to be plus y. And so at equilibrium we get 1 times 10 to the minus 5 minus y. And then this will be the equilibrium of the hydronium from HCN. But we have to realize something. We have to realize that you know, even though this hydrolyzes, there's going to be some hydronium present from water, and that's going to be what we call the common ion, and it's going to lead to the common ion effect. The common ion effect is when you have some hydronium here to begin with, you aren't going to generate as much cyanide because the hydronium is waiting to attack the cyanide, right, as it's being formed. And so the cyanide population can't grow. This is like, you know, if there's a big tiger here, and then you're uh, an antelope or whatever, uh, the antelope population isn't going to be able to grow as big as if there are no tigers present, right? If there are no tigers present, then the antelope population is going to grow big. And so this is actually wrong because we actually do have some hydronium here to begin with. Well, how much hydronium do we have here to begin with? It's from the water, and from the water we call that X. And so this is different than this, uh, a normal type of setup. In stepwise, we would always start off with zero because we're assuming we reset everything. But here, now, this is going to be x molar. And so this hydronium here, this is going to be our total at equilibrium. It's just going to be x plus y is our total hydronium. Over here, this is pure liquid. So pure liquid, we ignore. And then normally, we just say it's zero and zero because we just reset everything and make sure, oh, nothing's reacted yet. But in this case, we're going to reset it, yes. So it's going to be zero and zero right, from water, but we have some hydronium that's going to be present from HCN, and so this is a little bit weird because we're resetting it, but then we aren't resetting it for the other species. We're assuming that it's already at, at e some equilibrium, and so in, in this case, this is not going to be zero. This is going to be Y molar, and the hydroxide is going to be zero molar, and so the water has been reset. There's no water that's been reacted, and now now what we're going to do is we're going to add the hydronium from water, which is going to be plus x molar and plus x molar. And because of the initial hydronium here, x is not going to be 10 to the minus 7 molar. It's going to be much smaller than 10 to the minus 7 molar. Why is it going to be much smaller than 10 to the minus 7 molar? Because we got this you know, predatory hydronium here that's going to keep the population down, right? And so we can. And in other words, it's keeping the population down by favoring the reverse reaction. And so this will be the total here. And so this is how we connect the two equilibria. Now we've got to solve this simultaneously. Well, we solve this simultaneously. We're going to get the, the equation for over here um, for the HCN so right over here. So um, we know that. Uh, Ka for HCN is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. This is going to be the hydronium ion concentration times the cyanide concentration divided by the HCN concentration. It's a weak acid, so we expect a lot of molecules to remain undissociated, i.e. unreacted. And so we'll just plug in the, the numbers here. The numbers are going to be um, 
Well, the hydronium ion concentration at equilibrium is x plus y. And then the cyanide concentration of equilibrium is just y divided by the um, HCN concentration at equilibrium, which is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 5 minus y. Okay. And then for KW, we get this. For KW, we no, it's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 5 at 298 Kelvin, which is hydronium concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. So this is going to give us um, X plus Y for the hydronium and X for the hydroxide. So uh, why don't you try to solve this right now, right? Try to solve this. It should be simple, right? You've solved lots of these types of problems in algebra. It should be simple, right? <laughs> 